got more than keep striving in every way. International, what they call we international. When we ride hard, we never know more, but the rhythm when I come down, cool shot. And we ride hard, we don't mind, then we sit down steady. Fuck you, man, on the place, I'm with the one job, I'll skip. Yes, yes, yes. What is up, everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. Another great dev stream for you today. The one and only you, he, Sebastian. He's the Joshua Casper of you, he. Uh, he's an absolute beast. We, he was giving me a personal tutorial before we went live today. And let me tell you, it's going to be a good show. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me know where you're coming in from. And let me know what you're... Oh, oh, you're, you can't hear you yet, buddy. <laughs> uh, I'll be bringing Sebastian on in just a second. All right. Addy, what's up? Julian, Greg, what's going on? Frisky G. I need to update my screen names. You guys have such great screen names. All right, so today on the live stream, we're going to be going through Hive 2, which is one of Yuhi's flagship synths. Obviously, they've got a ton of synths that you need to check out if you haven't. I've made quite a few videos of their products here on the channel that my friend Killian will be posting throughout the stream. But, I mean, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Sebastian and Hive 2. So before we jump in, a couple of quick announcements. First... November is going to be absolutely crazy with live streams here on the channel. I mean, absolutely crazy. Lots and lots of them. So make sure you're subscribed and you've hit the bell notification to check those out because we're going to be doing a lot, probably like a dozen live streams right here on the channel with lots and lots of different people, brands. We've got some big YouTube personalities coming through. It's going to be a good time and we want you to be there for each and every one of those. Also, second announcement, we will be doing a giveaway today, and we're going to do it just like we do every time. All you need to do to be entered to win is be active in the chat and just be a positive force. That could be just saying cool, nice things, asking good questions, and what have you, but just be active in the chat. My friend Killian is going to choose a few random names at end, and then we will choose some winners. All right? So with that, 
join me in welcoming my good friend, Sebastian from Yuhi. Sebastian, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, Josh, how do, how you doing? <laughs> I'm absolutely phenomenal. I'm excited to get into this stream today. But before we do that, before we get into the bulk of what we're going to be doing here today, perhaps you can give the people that are watching a little bit of an introduction to both yourself, your role at UHE, and what we can expect on today's live stream. Yeah, so my name is Sebastian, uh, aka Seb. Uh, I'm product specialist and uh, audio and video creator uh, with Yuhi. So um, I do all the videos and demos and, and tutorials that you can uh, see on our YouTube channel. Uh, but I also go to trade shows and uh, do interviews. And um, wh whenever there is anything that, that goes out of the company that has uh, got to do with video or audio, then pretty much it, it goes through my hands first. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And yeah, so today we're looking at Hive, uh, and uh, I hope most of you pro will probably be aware of Hive already. So uh, I'm going to look at Hive today in a in a context of performing and uh, of playing it and tweaking the controls and yeah, m modulating and uh, just uh, making it sing. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Well, um, I love Hive. I've already said it. I'll say it again. I can't say it enough. It's an incredible instrument. It's a very robust feature set. So I have a ton of questions, I know. But everybody in the chat, if you have any questions for myself, Seb, or about Hi2, just go ahead and add Plugin Boutique, and we'll try to get those answered here on the live stream. But with that, Seb, well, let's go ahead and flip over to DAW and just jump right in to checking out Hive2. Sultry. Hey. <laughs> even yeah. the even the preset names are awesome in Hive 2. Arctic Heat Wave. That's like that's like an album name. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's telling the story. <laughs> so uh, I, I picked Arctic Heat Wave uh, to run you through uh, the the basics of the interface because uh, okay, in case you're looking at Hive for the first time, um, it's a um, it has this very idiosyncratic honeycomb in the middle, and you're probably going, oh, what, what is this all about? And it looks kind of symmetrical. Are these duplicates? What is that? So um, just by flicking through the basics, I will um, yeah, run you through the, through the who is who in, in, in the hive. So let's start uh, with the left side. Left and right are uh, identical uh, pipelines that have the classical oscillator, sub-oscillator, filter, one amp envelope, one modulation envelope, LFO, and some nifty modulation sources. And to the right, it's identically laid out. So this means you have two identical um, pipelines that can run in parallel and they get uh, mixed down in the end and run through the FX section. And this gives you a lot of potential for running sounds in parallel and having your modulation possibilities really have something to work with. Uh, down here, you have a modulation matrix with uh, 12 slots that have uh, the usual destination uh, and, um, source selectors and modulation amounts. But first things first, let me show you uh, by just enabling one oscillator, the sawtooth, sub oscillator is set to like oscillator. That means it also uses the sawtooth. Then let me bring in oscillator two.
Are these just the default settings right now? Uh, these are the default settings, yeah. So, uh, wait a moment. Let me reload the... Okay. Okay, there was something... Uh, okay, so sub oscillator one is like uh, like sawtooth, and uh, now bringing in the the right side will give you oscillator two. Now we now we're hearing it. Good. Let me just disable the the FX. Okay, so oscillator two, we have a wave table here. So uh, if you look at the at this uh, honeycomb, you can see a visual representation of the wavetable, and uh, it's uh, set to a uh, to complex and fizzle. I can just give you some alternative wavetables. Hey Seb, let's let's turn out the uh, uh, turn up the output just a little bit there. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, good. Okay, so you have all kinds of uh, categories that you can choose, uh, well, pr pretty rich amount of individual wavetables. Now adding the sub-oscillator, you can see that sub oscillator is not um, limited to the the lower octaves, but you can freely tune the sub oscillator, so that uh, that gives you the option of uh, um, well doing a, a, a fifth on top, if you like, or a third. So bringing in the... So what's next? Um, let's look at the shape sequencer. So right here you can tell that the, the bandpass filter is being modulated. Uh, by the shape sequencer. Now, what is the shape sequencer? So, think of the of the shape sequencer as a little um, eight-step sequencer that has um, eight separate little segments that can have different shapes. So, right now, I'm dialing in some kind of a sawtooth. Let me shorten the sequence so you can better tell what's going on. I can even dial in ratchets, so make it uh, multiple instances of the same segment. There's ways of looping the sequence. You can even address the, the steps individually. So that's kind of um, yeah, uh, a treasure trove of possibilities that are opening up there. Uh, le le let's bring in the oscillator again and look at the effects section. So here we have a, a preset that really goes all in. So you have all effects uh, activated. Uh, you can turn off individual effects. And you can even uh, change the order of the effects. And uh, pretty much every parameter that has a dial can be modulated. So you can sequence the feedback of the phaser. You can switch uh, wet on and off with alternating steps, uh, you can, well, think of it and it's possible. 
Seb, lots of people are wondering if you can import your own wavetables. You can, yeah, you can. So there's a, you can uh, import OM and 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 wave uh, files. Is there a, uh, an edit a wavetable editor inside as well? No, that's not uh, in in Hive two. Gotcha. So. And do you yeah. know off off table how many wavetables ship with the uh, Hive two out of the gate? Probably a hundred ish. Cool. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now let's make some music. Uh, please. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Good. So that was kind of the introductory pad. And uh, that was, there was one bit that confused me. And I, you, you, you see, if you turn off this, the oscillator selector, then you don't hear it. That, yeah. Note to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going, oh, where, where is it? Okay. Uh, turn it off. That's why I can't hear it. Okay, so uh, I have prepared uh, a preset that I named Hexagon Dream. And um, it is kind of reminiscent to a certain Scottish duo that is named after a, a country in North America. <laughs> so... You might be wondering why the door isn't running and still you can hear the sequence. And actually I managed to fool Josh. So <laughs> before the before the show he was flabbergasted and I had to uh, reveal the secret is that uh, the sequence of Hive draws its uh, clock from the door master tempo. So the, the transport doesn't have to be running. It's enough if there is a, a clock happening inside your door. I'm not sure about all the other doors. I'm using Bitwig mostly. So if I turn up the master tempo, then Hive tracks along. So, okay, so I had 84. That's a pretty sweet BPM. Okay, now what is happening here? Um, looking at the honeycomb, we have a sequencer running. Uh, step length is 16 16. Um, transpose gives you the note numbers, so you can see that it's pretty much uh, octaves, fourth and fifths. Uh, you have a track specifically for velocity, and I'm not using that one, but I'm using the mod track, and mod is just a, a control track that you can route to pretty much anything. And uh, here it is modulating low pass. So. Um, going to the second tab here, to the XY tab, that is actually very, very essential and that really opens up th the possibilities of Hive. So I can really hi highly recommend that you turn your attention uh, to the XY. So XY is four pads of XY coordinates with a blip that you can drag and then just uh, X and Y axis and uh, all these are mapped to parameters that make sense in the in the patch and uh, actually tweaking these when you design a patch is one of the more important things to do so right here we have uh, several oscillators you see I'm, I'm going all in here with both oscillators both sub oscillators and i have them laid out in a way that you can f cross fade between sub oscillator and the main oscillators. Okay, oh, looking at XY pad 2, I have mapped filter cutoff and filter resonance. So cutoff is X axis, and resonance is Y axis. Seb, do you perhaps want to show people how to route or assign the different parameters to the XY pads? Sure. So, 
right here, you can click on one of the XY tabs and then you will see the more detailed version of this overview here. And right here, looking at XY2, you can see that filter cutoff is routed. You can add more uh, destinations. So if, if I was going to, let's say, um, Detune. Now you can hear that it's detuned. And you can do that uh, in, in, in reverse polarity as well. Um, and you could you could do that with with pitch. If you if you want it. <laughs> so <laughs> Let's let's put that back down. So you can have up to four different sources Slots. per uh, vector in an X, XY pad. Exactly. And uh, I have uh, some modifiers here. So if I want it, let's go back to that tune thing. So that is awfully out of tune, but I could quantize that and go fifth in octaves. That makes a lot more sense, and uh, you can you can well, that damn thing, <laughs> and you can you can slew uh, the the values and you can uh, sample and hold them as well. So, and by the way, you can also uh, really unlock other parameters that might not come up on the surface. So there are some hidden parameters, some special filter and and of X parameters that are listed here. So always right clicking on the selector will open up all the possibilities for you. Christoph Schaefer is wondering if you can automate the XY parameter. You can. So in your door, they, they should come up as uh, one of the control lanes and they are just named X1 Y1, X2, Y2, and so on. Nice. And also, yeah. Seb, if you want to, just to clarify for Cedric, Mia Lorette is wondering, because you talked briefly about the latch feature, they're wondering if <laughs> Hive will never sync with your DAW. If you, um, you can unsync it, right? Can you, he says, does this mean that Hive 2, it is not possible to choose a different BPM than that of the DAW? Um, it is hard linked to the, um, to the host tempo. But you could you might, play, you, right? You could, you could shift it, you, you, you could shift it, but um, it is uh, actually hard synced, yeah. All right. and there is a, ways of, within, just... Uh, yeah. Within within a hive, the the shape sequencer uh, has a, its own clock, and that can be uh, that can be modulated. And okay. I think even with with odd with odd measures or with odd uh, ratios, or yeah, yeah. Also, Joshua Veldman is wondering if the UI is resizable. It is. So here, right click and then choose any skin that might be installed and uh, use one of these values here. So I'm, I'm running at uh, maximum size right now. But by the way, I, I have a 4K monitor, so this is a 4K desktop, uh, 4K Windows resolution, so this is already pretty, pretty big. Yeah, I think this will do for most. Yeah, yeah it's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, let's keep let's keep rocking while the qu uh, questions keep filtering in. Uh, everybody, if you have a question for Seb about Hive Two, go ahead and at Plugin Boutique with those, and we'll try to get them answered here on the stream. Okay, going for XY pad number three, we have a envelope decay and envelope release. Now that is a, a, a generalization for different envelopes because I'm using the filter envelope and the amp envelope. And you can even do things like compensating for uh, filter cutoff loss. If when you when you tweak an envelope, it might be that it appears to open too much. Then you can make it 
open the envelope while tweaking the while decreasing the filter cutoff. So this is what I'm doing here. So this always makes always makes sense, uh, and I don't have to tweak several controls at once. I just uh, use that one, the macro that I set up, and then it will give me will give me musically pleasing results. Opening control B, which I mapped to octave range of one of the oscillators. And adding controller A, detuning the stereo width. Okay, going over to XY pad 4, I have mapped that one. This, uh, the fourth quadrant is mostly um, reserved for FX duties in all our presets. So this, this is pretty much where you will find reverb and delay most of the time. So you, you can see that uh, reverb dry wet is mapped to the X axis. And here, delay, dry, wet, delay feedback, and a, a low pass in the delay chain is mapped to the y-axis. It's crazy how much variety you're getting out of just moving around those four XY pads. Uh, I was briefly mentioning control A and control B. So control A and B are two uh, user configurable main controllers that can be used to um, to do little tricks like, let's say, detune uh, an oscillator or add, a, add an effect or add a special twist. In some patches it will introduce the other oscillator that isn't um, audible otherwise. So these are user configurable performance controllers that are easily mapped. I mean, if you look at an Arturia a key step, it has four controllers and even, even, even small keyboards mostly have at least one or two little um, user configurable knobs that you can map any parameter to. Yeah, and of course, mod wheel will always add something nice in our presets. So in this case, Mod Wheel will introduce a bit of vibrato. So if if um, any if there's any, uh, any question Sure, that we got needs a, to be a couple answered. of questions, yeah. Okay. Um, Dave V is wondering if Hive 2 has MPE compatibility. We are working on it. All right. You heard it here first, everybody. Plug-in boutique, dance yeah. streams. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so there there will be there will be uh, MPE beta versions popping up on KVR soonish. Nice. So just stay just stay tuned, yeah. But the, it's it's a complex um, endeavor. Um, MPE. We're also a uh, Shin Ray and a couple of other people are wondering if we could just hear a few of the presets, maybe some of your favorites. Okay. So let me. And everybody, while he's pulling up some presets, let's hit the like button. You can hit the heart button too in the chat, but we like the like button. We're old school here. You know what? <laughs> I'm just going back to the track from the beginning so I don't mess up any of my settings. That's a good shout. So good. One thing, before um, you jump in, one thing that I really, really dig about um, the the preset browser in Yuhi products 
is how you can organize things into separate groups all along, like just color code it. I absolutely love that. Obviously, it's a huge synth. So there are a ton of uh, presets. And of course, you can get packs of presets. But the, the ability to sort things out by colors and groups, I absolutely love it. I Big do shout too. Out. Yeah, Big shout out. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, uh, yeah, I will give you uh, Black Eyes. Uh, this came out uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's from a sound set called Monochrome. Uh, the designer's name is Niall McCallum. And, uh, well, he's, he's genius. So this one makes use of the shape sequencer, by the way. So if, if you want to add chaos and, and brittle textures and crumbling materials, that's where it really shines is, uh, um, yeah, making these material sounds, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I love how it's it's detailed, but it's still really rich. There's so much movement happening that makes sense. It's not just it I don't know. It's it's just it's fantastic. Absolutely. Keep keep showing me stuff because I'm I'm really digging this. <laughs> So this kind of static buzz that you're hearing is uh, an aftertouch modulation of the one one of the filters, I think. That's funny. Um, uh, we have a question from Minnie Hilly saying, "Is polyphonic aftertouch supported?" So it is. There you go. So um, again, for MPE, we are looking at releases coming up in the future. But if you use um, if you use clap, then of course clap also um, supports polyphonic modulation, and especially the, com the combo Bitwig and clap is working pretty well. Uh, so far, only um, beta version. There is one available on KVR, I think, and uh, more updates coming up. So it is. 
polyphonic, but we're still working on support with uh, with hardware and with different DAWs. So that's an ongoing uh, topic, and we are really, really behind that, and we would love to integrate that in, in all our future plugins. Nice. Yeah. Let's hear some more. Maybe... Um like some sequences or maybe some leads as well. I mean, I, I think to be completely honest, we could just sit here and go through all the, all the presets because they're so fantastic, but let's give a few more and then we'll go on to the next part of your presentation. Yeah. I could do that for hours actually. <laughs> so um, now we are going for uh, the sound set Kinesis by Brian Lake, AKA sound author. Uh, we released that sound set earlier this year, I think might be. So yeah, this yeah, is I like a, like a sound preset pack that people can purchase. Separately. Exactly. Okay. So this is this is available in online shops. Okay, so Sounds so good. Just make it fall apart with one touch of a button. <laughs> like rainbow. A zippy minor chord sequence. Well, that's what it is. You didn't you don't need anything else. You just press this on vinyl. That's good. all you need. All you need is some cinematic yeah. percussion and now you've got a trailer. Done. Yeah. Opening Suspense. up the opening up the um Mod wheel will do some pretty nifty things here, I guess. I think it really speaks to the robustness of Hive 2 that while you're while you've been playing a lot of these past presets it sounds like there's more than one synth you know what I mean it, it and it doesn't sound like it in a cheap way like it really sounds like multi-layered patches from two different synths at least happening at the same time that's just it's just so wonderful to to hear and obviously you're you're quite the skilled musician so it's really, it's really coming through. Thanks for the flowers. <laughs> They're in the mail. They're in the mail. They're coming. <laughs> Good. Crushed mallets.
Hey, Seb, we got a request for uh, a few bass patches. Someone said they heard through the grapevine, aka online, that this really excels in the lower end of the frequency spectrum. So perhaps we can give them a, a, a taste of a few patches and then keep cranking away with the presentation. Cool. So I just um, look for any um, any marks, any uh, yeah, any favorites that I came across and. I'm wiggling the mod wheel here. That's the mod wheel. That one isn't mapped at all. Okay, this must be an old preset. Not all XY pads are uh, mapped in the original legacy presets. Okay, fat squeezer. <laughs> that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty that's, yeah that's sick <laughs> i think this this is good for for drum and bass what do you say uh yeah i mean industrial anything industrial i think that that's going to slide right in nicely Do not adjust your set. <laughs> this is just a test. Yeah. All right. Well, we uh, we've went we went through quite a few presets. Perhaps we can circle back to more preset previews. But let's keep rocking with the presentation. I know you had a lot prepared, so I don't want to leave any of that on the floor. Good. Okay. So uh, coming back to the sequence. Um. Now let me latch the sequence again. Good. So, because I had something to layer on top of that, just to show you that you can build a kind of a jam situation just with multiple hive uh, instances. So right now, um, the door isn't running, so I will now switch from track to track and add some layers of hive presets for you. So. Here we have a, a drone. Two instances of Hive, ladies and gentlemen. Two instances. Wow. Now adding a pad on top. Is this loud enough? I. Yeah, yeah.
adding a lead sound on top. But you're playing that, right? I'm playing that, yeah. Yeah, that one you're playing. The other ones are running on latch. Exactly. So the lead sound is what I'm playing. Blade Runner 3058. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Back to the sequence. I'm letting go of the the pad. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. Wow. Live performance just happened, and it was mesmerizing. That was intense. That was awesome. Let's get some likes. Let's get some fire emojis. Let's get some everything in the chat right now. That was incredible, man. I mean, I, you've, you were, I was captivated start to finish there. It, I didn't expect you to do a live performance, you know, with, 
with your mouse essentially and have it be so flawless that was really incredible <laughs> thank you i mean we're in berlin here so that's that's why berlin school is pretty much in our dna if you're <laughs> Well, I mean, you should do in the eighties, and I, I want to see your live set. I want to see that with some just some intense visuals. Yeah, you should you should definitely let me know when you're going to be doing a show close to London, and uh, I'll definitely come through. That was really impressive, no joke. You know what? I'm uh, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna keep the the setup. Yeah, I mean the project the <laughs> yeah. project file. I'm not gonna delete the project file. That's a good idea. <laughs> is there is there somewhere people can check out your music? Do you release anywhere if someone kind of like that vibe and can can listen to more somewhere? Yeah, my my uh, my artist name is High Boyd, like like in hybrid, but with an O, High Boyd. Okay. And uh, if you look if you look me up on uh, the usual platforms, you'll find me. And my 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 latest album is a Berlin school project so pre, pre, like, like this love that pretty much in, in that mood yeah um before we can continue on with the rest we have i mean it's a question that comes on in each and every one of these dev streams that we do uh and it's come up quite a few times here and i think it's uh, warranted with such a beefy synth and that is questions about cpu um and how it handles you know, Hive 2, and you had, you know, four instances running, some pretty complex patches. Like, is there anything to, to speak on uh, uh, relating to that? Hey, so uh, Hive was designed with low CPU load in mind. Um, you know that Diva on the other uh, side of the spectrum is a CPU hog because it's, it's very demanding. And uh, and Hive is is lean and mean. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, I know in, yeah. in Diva, there's like, if I'm not mistaken, there's like a setting where you can go less CPU intensive, right? Yeah, there is. Is, yeah. is there something similar in Hive, or is it just not necessary because of how well it's um, there? Coded? There, there is. Um, it is it is hidden. Because uh, up here in the synth engine selector, you have clean, normal, and dirty. Mm. And uh, I know that they are uh, they 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 have different CPU loads because uh, computations might differ in terms of filter quality. And um, yeah, pretty much, I think the filter models they have a different CPU load. Now uh, I forgot which one, but it's 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 in the manual. So one of these modes is more cpu hungry than than another uh but still this is not a cpu hungry plugin so i mean you can always download the demo and and just throw as many instances of hive at your door as you like and, and just test the limits <laughs> there you That's, go love that, that approach. Easy. yeah 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 um and uh welcome to everybody who's just tuning in we're here with seb from yuhi and we're checking out Hive 2, and it's been an absolute masterclass so far. Some of the the best sounding tones I've heard come out of Hive 2 have just been played here. So definitely rewind. The, the stream will live in infamy here as an archive on the YouTube channel. But we are going to be giving away one lucky person will get uh, their pick of a Yuhi product. And to be entered into that giveaway, all you need to do is be active in the chat and be a positive force. Just saying nice things, asking good questions at Plugin Boutique. If you have a question, we'll try to get them answered here on the stream. Seb, what's up next? You got anything else for us? Yeah, sure. So um, now looking at um, a kind of instrumental hip hop track that I prepared. Of yeah. course, as as the rest of the presentation, this is all Hive. And uh, for the first four tracks, I've gone for one of our uh, latest sound sets. It's called Kling Klong, and it's um, it's a sound set programmed by Howard Scar. So the master himself made a wonderful percussive sound set with uh, loops and hits. And um, I've selected some presets that I thought fit the context. But without further ado, let me just play you the bass drum track. It's a preset called Heart Shaped Cave. And, well, it sounds pretty gnarly. Let me open the filter. It 
So this has kind of a tuning envelope going on and So you can go to wild places with this one, but I'm I'm toning it down a little and making it kind of a muffled but still thumping kick. Sounds almost like, like this. cinematic, like a taiko drum or something. It sounds great. It does. Yeah, a, mu a muffled, a muted taiko drum. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, it's like a march is happening, and and the the evil elves are coming to storm the castle or something. It reminds it me of <laughs> to <laughs> totally. But it does have have something of a heartbeat, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something organic about it. Yeah. Okay, let's bring in the snare. Now, if I load the preset as it's meant to sound, then you're gonna be surprised uh, because it doesn't really sound like a. No, it's not the preset. Let me let me bring up the the default. Okay, so what is this? You think? Well, it is a kind of a fantasy tom. <laughs> okay, don't sweat. It's this is not what the snare will sound like. Okay. So, <laughs> so what I do now is I will shorten it. Give it some reverb. And then tone it down a little. And now, as soon as you add the hi-hat, you will see that we're in trap set territory. Okay, so now bringing in the hi-hat. Um, that's a preset called Hats On. And that, this is basically a loop. So what I've done here is I've added some longer notes that uh, don't start on the one. So they kind of syncopate and have a little variating rhythms. Now, tweaking the filter a little bit. Adding some glitch and buzz here and there. Of course, because this, this isn't in sync with the host tempo, but this, that's why it's called glitch. So I would use this very sparingly. So you could, when you automate this, and just, let's say, on the fourth beat of the bar, just have it freak out for one beat, and then it's back in sync, something like that. It's just a little bit of a toying around here. And as you can hear, the filters are not what you're used to because we're looking at our reverb and dissonant filters, which are out of the ordinary. So they are not, let, let me just solo this filter. So this is a reverb filter, which is based on delays. So it's not a frequency based filter, but a time based filter. Interesting. And this will give you So tweaking the cutoff knob will not give you the usual uh, frequency cutoff, but it will sh pretty much shift the spectrum of the reverb. Adding resonance will really make it very clangy like this. Yeah, that's for the drop right there. That's almost a lead right there. That's... <laughs> So wherever you set the control, it will always come up with a totally radically different timbre. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 amazing. Really unique filter there too. I love it. Yeah, yeah. This is really great for anything metal, metalish, clangy, uh, tubish. Name it. Okay. Listen to this filter. So this is called dissonant. 
Um, this is uh, also a delay line based filter, so something similar to a to a comb filter. And here as well. That's <laughs> so amazing, man. <laughs> and uh, this is just st static setting, right? Uh, imagine if you start uh, modulating the. I don't know if my brain can take the it. A whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So. Now, this is probably not what the. What the, what the author intended. Okay, anyway, let's just bring it in. Okay, now we got our hi-hat. And now we need a bass. in a high pass if I like. Add some distortion. Ooh, I like that. I can bring in a fifth. section has in store for us yeah chorus and reverb I won't put too much So that the bass, the bass is really a bass. I wanted it to work. Nothing too fancy here. But now let's add the bioluminescence sequence. I think we've already tuned into this preset earlier. some of the distortion. Our road is sample rate and uh, bit crusher. like that. And now the piano. We solo this for a moment. So filter and steam which is noise. Noise through a dissonant filter. So it's a steampunk e-piano. Tremolo and outer panning. But taking a, 
taking off some of the attack, adding some glide. Bring in some more chorus. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds great. And now let's bring in the rest. Another symbol. Two live performances. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that was just Hive 2 making all of that sound. That is oh, truly impressive. I mean, thank you for the work that must have went into to preparing this live stream. It's been absolutely mesmerizing. I think I speak for myself and the uh, entire chat that it's been incredible. Thank you so much. You're, thank you. You're very welcome. Was it's been there, a pleasure. Yeah, was there anything else you wanted to show us, or can we bang out some questions and then and wrap up and get out of here, or what? I think let's let's look at the questions. Okay. Yeah. A couple of questions about different skins. Is there a different skin? Yeah, there is a different skin. Uh, it, uh, the standard skin here uh, is called original, and then bringing up, bringing up the context menu, you can load Ismo skin. Ooh. Which looks like this. I like it's that. Re really, really laid back. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, nice. Yeah. To be honest, I always use the original. That's how I find my way around best. Yeah. Because uh, of course, everything is uh, well. It takes some getting used to. Of if course. You change the skin. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, let me see. Is there an arpeggiator built in? Aaron Malik is wondering. It is, yeah. yeah. Up here in the ARP section, arpeggiator, direction, order, restart, octaves. It's all there. And Mac or Mad MacMan is wondering if you, another great name. I need to update my username on social media platforms. Joshua Casper's kind of boring. But anyway, mm -hmm. Mad MacMan is wondering if you can record 
the XY pad automation inside of Hive, or you if you just need to do it in your DAW. DAW. All right. Yeah. Oh, there's the one about the skins. Uh, and Tollington is wondering for the performances we've been hearing, if there's anything automated inside a Bitwig or is that all automation and uh, variability happening just from the patches inside of Hive? Aside from uh, velocity here and there, I think I actually did erase all of the automation before. So it's all pretty much note on, note off and uh, me fiddling with the controls. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody about 30 seconds to a minute to start chatting to be entered to win um, their choice of any Yuhi product. So it could be Hive 2, it could be Diva. Um, Repro is another really good one. You got a bunch of really great gnarly effects that are, are quite unique and awesome and powerful. Uh, and whoever is the lucky winner of today's stream will be able to make their choice. So I think if good you luck. don't... Oh, go ahead. Good luck. I yeah. just oh, yeah, wish yeah, good yeah. luck. Uh, so while uh, people are giving their... or get, chatting to be entered to win, uh, by the way, just a quick announcement I said at the beginning of the stream, all of November, tons and tons of live streams here on the channel. Uh, just go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified. I'm going to be making them live pretty close to the date we actually do go live. We try to send out a newsletter. If you're not subscribed to the Plug and Boutique newsletter, you should be. Um, but the best way to stay up to date is just to be subscribed here on the YouTube channel and hit the bell uh, to be notified whenever we do these things or post new videos. If you want uh, maybe a couple more presets while we're giving people the opportunity to chat to be able to win. Sure thing. Yeah, I think that's a good way to wrap it up. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let me go back to uh, Kinesis, pads, dark and dirty. That sounds good. Is that a pitch delay? It It is actually, I think um, we are looking at the delay time being modulated in real time here. Uh, that is uh, what's, that's, it's my guess. Incredible. Yeah. All right, let's All right. give him one more to wrap it up. Hidden pulse, magic pulse. Oh, yeah. So good. Absolutely phenomenal. Sebastian, thank you so much for coming through, putting together a really robust presentation and just knocking the socks off of me because I have Hive too, but I feel like I'm clearly not using it enough after watching you do what you did today. <laughs> I saw some thank people uh, in the chat as well being like, well, I need to pull Hive back out because wow. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Josh, for having me. It's been a pleasure. 
And it's, it's been really exciting. That was my first proper live stream like that. So really? any hiccups? Yeah, Nothing. yeah. I mean, there was you flew absolute pro, smashed it out of the park. Let's get okay. some likes on the Thank video you. to to let Sebastian know how well he did here today. Um, and I've got five names of people who were wonderful in the chat this evening. And if you want, you can pick number one through five, and that will be our winner from today. Just any random number? Well, maybe your favorite or maybe your least favorite, My favorite. number between one and the five. The first number, I'm, I'm looking at a three right now. Okay. So let's pick number three. All right. That's... Ladies and gentlemen, friends from everywhere, I, I, I still they need a drum roll, but I don't have a drum roll. But the winner of today's stream giveaway is Yak Martin. Congratulations, Yak Martin. You are the winner, the one and only Congrats. winner. Um, and the good news is you get to choose whatever plugin you want from Yuhi. What you need to do is select the plugin you want. Send us an email at support at pluginboutique.com with your name, a screenshot of you logged in as Yak Martin here on YouTube, uh, your email address that you want the plugin registered to, and what plugin you want. Send that to support. My colleagues will get you sorted uh, in a timely fashion. And that's it. Seb, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Make music. Make me. I love it. I love it. I think that's a great place to end it. Everybody, thanks a lot for tuning in. Come through all November. Lots of great live streams. And Seb, come back anytime you want. That was phenomenal. And we look forward to having you again real soon. Thank you. All right, everybody. Ciao, ciao. See you in the next one. Keep striving in every way. Who am I? International, what they call we international. When we ride harm with the rhythm, open the rhythm and I come down, crucial. And we ride harm with the man, then we sit down steady. For the men on the place, I wait, they want your balls.